Because like, then there's a, a, a DS version of Battle Network 5, which mm. has the contents, I think, of both the games, and it has maps on the bo- a second screen and stuff, and it's a better version of 5. Like, just play the DS version of 5. But 6 never got a DS version, weirdly enough. Uh, I think probably because Battle Network sales were were flagging so hard that they just decided not to do it. Because, um, like, uh, like, I was going to say, like, Battle Network, you know, it, even though I never... Like got into the series, like I said, I can appreciate the the changes in the art, and, and the, it was impossible to avoid too, because that was all Mega Man was for a decade. Yeah, right? and it just it, it was you know for a new audience, and that's all fine. But that Star Force shit from day one, I was just like, yeah, this doesn't even look cool. No, it was you know I can't even give it I can't even give it a pass on that. Like, yeah. shit, man. Yeah, it sucks. That's, that's all there is to it. So I don't know if I'm missing any Battle Network Network Transmission. Battle Network 2, Mega Man EXE WS. I don't know what this is. Oh, this was for Wonder Swan Crystal. WS, yeah, okay. Um, okay, okay, no, no, this is just the Mega Man Battle Network for Wonder Swan, which I actually totally said a minute ago. So, never mind. Wait, no. <laughs> What's happening Wait, here? Wait, no. What's happening this here? This game was released on the Wonder Swan Color only in Japan. This game is a platformer like Mega Man Network Transmission rather than a role-playing game. Oh. An unofficial English patch was made for the game August 30th, 2012. Liam, um, you got some work to do. You got I'm, some research to do. I'm really in- do. intrigued by this. Uh, I own a Wonder Swan, so I should try to import this, but I know the Mega Man games are a bit expensive. Um, EXE WS. So wait, so you're telling me there is a 2D sprite-based Mega Man platformer that hit the Wonder Swan. That came out after X was done. That nobody knew about until this moment. That wasn't network transmission. I can't believe I, I never heard about this. Not as, yeah. What the fuck? Okay. I'm I'm like trying to look up some gameplay. You got some research to do, I sir. I do. I'm, I'm really interested to play it. Oh my god, look. It's it's a like it's a 2D Mega Man game. That, and it looks where you're playing as Mega Man Yeah, that looks but like you, a, But you've got the battle chip system in the top corner where you equip your battle chips bro, and stuff. You might have gov. another network transmission. Bro, gov. Bro. This looks like <laughs> this looks like a fucking video. What's we going do. on? What like there's an English translation patch. I'd love to fucking check this shit out at some point. It looks a little slow though. It does look a little slow, uh, without a doubt. So the Battle Network 3, Battle Network 4, 4.5, Battle Network 5, the DS one, yeah. Battle Network 6. I don't know if I'm going to embed then, video footage uh, no, no, you no, know, no, no, for, for folks, but that's pushing it. take a look at that. What was so, uh, what WS And then there's Rockman.exe Catan Standard, a licensed version of the Settlers of Catan. Oh, of course. Which was only available in Japan. All right. Um, Can I upset some people right now? What's up? Live? I fucking hate Settlers of Catan. I think it's a really boring game. Oh, yeah. And it never did anything for me. That's all right. I'm not going to fight you on that. That's. that's but that's we can up. play the Rockman EXE version of Catan, and you'll get your fill. I can't believe that exists. I, I, I never knew, and I never, ever would have thought. I love some fucking tabletop games, but I never could deal with Settlers of Catan. It just bored slower. me. It, just, it, it was slow, and the... The, the content was unexciting. I mean, you wanted to play board games. You're just asking. But, me. like, Risk is to slow. Be bored. But my my brain can, like, you know, turn yeah. the, the fake war into something interesting. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I can get hype over the dice that I'm rolling and think, like, yeah, oh, my I, army's I, being I don't, yours. I don't adore Catan, but I, I'll, I play it at the holidays with my... With certain segments of my family who I can deal to play it with. It's weird, but, but I, th- I... I like tabletop games on the whole. I, I think we it, both do. I think if I was playing a game that was exactly like Risk, but it was about, like, farming, I would get bored <laughs> because my imagination is not... You're not it, sated. You're not satisfied. It's not putting... Exactly. I'm not thinking about... There's no blood on this battlefield. It's not my... Only, the consequ- sh- only sheep. The consequences are for naught. I mean, except for the lives of your citizens, but... Okay. Go if ahead. that doesn't matter, then yeah, that's for not absolutely, or or whatever. So we uh, hit that switch. Now let me take a look at the unopened progression. I've been wanting to check out a Battle Network game for the channel, but it's like a one-off really doesn't do Battle Network service, in the sense that like you get nothing. 
Well, what is half an hour of, 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 an, RPG. of, of an RPG? Yeah, exactly. At the end of the so day. It's just kind of a waste of time. We know that problem. But, uh, like, network transmission, and now this Wonderswan one. I feel when, your feelings deeply. I always thought the Wonderswan one was a straight port of Battle Network. I never knew it was this platformer thing. Yeah. The Wonderswan's crazy, though. I, I, I mentioned it earlier while we were recording another video, but I played the Tekken card game a bunch on the Wonderswan. That game's awesome. That game's super good. I don't Tekken. think there's a translation. Tekken card game. Yeah, on the Wonder Swan. It's only on the Wonder Swan. You never got what, ported anywhere. How? What is that? It's like a board. It's like a tactics game slash card game. Okay. It's neat. It's it's cool. I can show you one day. I bought a copy of it for 50 yen in Akihabara and never looked back. <laughs> the Wonder Swan's nuts, man. Because I don't know if you've ever bothered to look at its library or anything, or if you've ever bothered to ask yourself. How could it get an exclusive Tekken game? Yeah, I How did know. It have... I, 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 there was a time when I was looking into it. Yeah. Um, it, it fascinates me because, like, Namco is the most prolific maker of games in Japan. So, like, of course it had support because it's Namco. Right. It's their hardware, right? So, like, when you look back at it, it has exclusive Digimon fighting games, exclusive Naruto, wait, exclusive wait, 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 One wait. Piece. <laughs> wait. Yeah. Yes, it does. Hold on. Yes, it does. <laughs> Rumble Arena equivalents on the Wonder Swan. Um, Digimon fighting? Like one, like uh, Rumble Arena. You remember Rumble Arena on the GameCube and PS2? Digimon Rumble Arena? Uh, no, actually, I didn't. Those are uh... Digimon fighting games as well. But on, on the Wonder Swan, they have exclusive versions of those. Proper. Proper. Well, fuck. Yeah. That's um, interesting. The Wonder Swan has like an exhaustive... Like you just go down it and you're like, yep, Namco, 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 Namco. It has an exclusive Klonoa game. That people don't talk about because everyone talks about the, the other Klonoa games, but it's the, it's a really cool Klonoa game because the whole gimmick with the Wonder Swan was you could turn it sideways, right, and play it sideways because yeah. the buttons are mapped like they're made that way. Yeah. So, yeah, like that's a hell of a it library. It has its own Klonoa that can be held vertically. Um, it has this other one that I just want to make sure I am remembering the timeline correctly because I think I am. Uh, yeah, it has this game called uh, Rhyme Rider Kerori Kerorikan, right? Which is an exclusive game made by Nana Onsha, uh, who made Parappa the Rapper, right? Okay. Um, and so they did uh, their old like game Tune and Glue, then Parappa Um Jammer Lammy Vib Ribbon, and they, Vib Ribbon, yeah. yeah. And then they did Rhyme River Rhyme Rider Kerorikan on Wonder Swan, and it's just a secret Vib Ribbon sequel. Whoa! It's 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 Vibribbon. It is absolutely Vibribbon, but it's got a totally different aesthetic. And they actually made a real sequel to Vibribbon uh, in 2004 called Vibripple, um, which never came out in North America. So are you telling me that this narrative that Vibribbon died is just a fucking false? Vibribbon was it's the, just bullshit. That was the only one that came out in North America. It absolutely like as a series, it's gone now. But there was Vibribbon. Uh, Rhyme Rider Kerorikan is just a Vibribbon game but not called Vibribbon and uh, I'll have to show you one day it has the most incredible packaging I've never seen a game packaged so lovingly there's so much okay. care put into it uh, it opens like it folds open it doesn't open like a box from the top it folds outwards and the manual is a set of trading like a set of like a deck of cards it's printed on a manual um, and when you fold it open, the artwork changes from what you see on the box to what you see on the inside. Oh, cool. It, it's so lovingly... That's awesome. Yeah, it's lovingly put together. Um, yeah, if you, I'd, love, so I'd love, here, love to see that. Vib Ribbon has... So there's there's Rhyme Rider, which I will argue is just... It's just another Vib Ribbon. Then there's Mojib Ribbon. What the for the PS2, and then there's Vib Ripple. For Liam, the PS2. Liam, the, like, we're, we're going a little bit too inside on this fucking <laughs> on this discussion now. Dude, there's a lot. You're starting to lose me, man. Yeah, no, there is absolutely a lot. Oh and my it's, god. Uh, okay. It's nuts. And that's your just Sorry for everyone for the backtracking here. I just wanted to double check and make sure I didn't miss anything on the top on the bottom floor. Yeah. Um, no, that's the right choice. And uh, it's the right choice. Want to go reinvestigate. And Vibribbon still holds up perfectly. Like, they, when they put it out recently on PS3 and yeah. Vita, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I bought it. And it's the only uh, PS1 game on Vita that I'm happy to stretch across the full screen because it doesn't significantly impact the visuals at all. Right. 
I, I would kill for a remastered version of Vib Ribbon that runs at higher resolutions just to get that sharpness on everything. And it's a game that would not be hurt by it at all. Yeah, but it looks cool. Well, fucking bl white lines on a black yeah. background, you know? You fucking like, add in... What? Add in... Um, what's that service that has Kanye exclusive? What's that service? What? Uh... Not SoundCloud, but uh, uh, the uh, music subscription service that you stream stuff on. Oh god, um, uh, 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 the Jay Z shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Add that, add that support into right, 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 right. And it's like, yeah, okay, uh, wonderful. Uh, oh god, it's on the tip of my tongue too. Anyway, uh, that shit's. I think that shit's like almost done. Anyway, my friend, my friend subscribed to it just for Kanye. <laughs> it was. You need to get him. Um, Gotta get your Yeezy fix. Oh, well, you can just say Spotify, but I mean the, the Spotify. That's it. Oh, you're thinking of Spotify? I'm thinking of Spotify, yeah. You're not thinking of, um, um, Tidal? Tidal? I was actually thinking of Spotify. Oh, okay. Doesn't Spotify have, have Kanye West exclusive? No, or? he's on my, he's on my, my Apple oh, music I, store. Okay, well, I'm crazy. I, I'm sorry. For some reason, I thought, or maybe it was one album that they had exclusively of his or something. Ah. Like, for, for a period or something like that. Because, because, uh, like, when it comes to, like, uh, to Tidal is the one that's, like, owned by Jay-Z and the artist. Is it? And, okay, okay. And then they had that super creepy press conference where... They made it sound like, like they were going on and on about artist rights and all this crazy shit. Right. And, okay. And like they made it sound like you were joining a cult when you were just signing up <laughs> for a music service. And That's neat. It was fucking weird. We try to forget those days. Oh no, I'm clearly confusing it. It seems like someone else got the, the Kanye album and Spotify didn't have it and that was a problem. Yeah, and I remember that Taylor Swift took them to the cleaners for a bit too because. Uh, hey. They, oh. they, they, there was a problem with That's the, her, her job. money. I, I heard the phone calls. I know her money wasn't right. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Hey, here's a great place for me to go to the bathroom. Yeah, do it. Okay. So, 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 so you went to the bathroom and that was good, right? That was good. That was, it was a great, it was a great bathroom trip. I don't know if you saw what I was doing. I was just eating. I was just polishing off a small packet of pretzels from Air Canada that I guess someone had uh, brought here. Maybe Star, I don't know. And the reason uh, I was I, th polishing... I think it was uh, Trader Pat, actually. Oh, that would, yeah. He's our, he's our Trader Joe's hookup. Oh, no, no, these are, sorry, these are Air Canada pretzels. Oh, so, okay. So they came off someone's plane, right? Um, and the reason I ate salty is, of course, because right before that I was eating sweet. And I just tried Trader Joe's JoJo's for ah, the first that's, time. I was like, I'm like, I know what you're getting into, but why are you, why are you roundabout on I this? I swear to God, <laughs> Trader Joe is not paying me. I swear to God, I don't know him. <laughs> but these Trader Joe's JoJo's, which are just knockoff Oreos. Yep. I swear to God, they I like them more than Oreos. They are better than Oreos. I've only eaten and that three. Is, that is a hell of a boss to fucking take on, mm. right? You, you come got, at you got one market leader, and your product is better. You come at the king, you best come correct. And yeah. Trader Joe's JoJo's come fucking correct. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, like most most competitors, they can kiss the ring, but they can't ever touch the crown. That, like, and Trader Joe just yeah. fucking in my heart took the crown, and I'm happy with it. More than like a double stuffed Oreo, even which is like I'm a big fan of the double stuff. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like a golden Oreo more than a, a regular Oreo. Me I'm too, crazy actually. like that. Yeah. No, no, oh. I agree with you. I agree. With you. Oh, because like last time I did that, Matt like just took a shit right on the floor. I, I, yeah, but I mean like Matt takes a shit when you do the wrong thing. You Sometimes know, that's, that's, that's kind of his gimmick. That's um, that's how it goes down. But yeah, I'm, I'm I'm tired of the regular Oreo taste to be honest. Like I've had it so much and Trader Joe's JoJo's, which are just knockoff Oreos yep. again. I'll tell you what, just man. There's something about them. They're so fluffy. Because every time we go to the States, you know, there's a couple of staple things that Matt and Liana got to do. Yeah. And the, p the pimping of Trader Joe's is one of them, right? That is mm. a constant Absolutely. in our lives. And um, I feel like I've never really gotten the huge deal. There's occasionally, occasionally there's some snacks that, hit, that rub me the right way. But, you know, like I said, I'm like, I'm pretty mild on chocolatey snacks sometimes. Yeah, so yeah. it's not a huge, huge deal to me. Um, but... Those JoJo's and the other thing, if you haven't tried them yet, is the cookie butter. Yeah, okay, you know what? Motherfucker. One time at a con, someone gave me cookie butter, right? Trader Joe's cookie butter. And I opened the lid just to make sure it was sealed. Someone wasn't giving me poison or anything. And, and you was. tried to bring it on the and plane. And it was. And I, I completely foolishly tried to bring it on the Never plane. Never going to happen. And I, I didn't... I, you know, I, I cared, obviously. To whoever gave it to me, I'm sorry your gift got wasted. Absolutely. Yep. 
I cared, but fortunately it wasn't like a valuable or anything. So it, I was like, ah, shit. It happened it. to Matt too. Um, they confiscated his cookie butter. It was the same event. He it was the same event. Oh, both yeah. of you guys. Okay. Same time. He was almost in tears. Um, I saw we have some. Someone has brought cookie yeah, butter to our office. Dude. So I got to lather myself fucking up. Fucking cookie butter, bro. Like, I was never all about the a butter. convert. The shaved butter, the cookie butter. <laughs> yeah, I was never a convert until, like, I, I got to that. taste that. And it's a it's peanut just, butter it's, equivalent, right? It's, no, it's actually just crushed cookies. But, like, is it is the goal the same, kind of? Like, it's it's put just... Put this on your toast? No, di dip your cookie just in do it. Do what <laughs> Do whatever the fuck you want with it. Okay, sure. Like, yeah, they okay. don't. They're not picky. They don't care. Enjoy. So we gotta blast that thing this time? No, that looks bad. Let's blast it. No, that looks bad. What about that guy over there? That's the that's the evil logo of the of the rebellion. Um, that's a dead body. Yeah, let's take him. But yeah, re recently we had some amazing Trader Joe's stuff. We had that uh, that s hot and sweet uh, jerky recently. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, thought that yeah, was incredibly yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, that was strong. That, that was, was strong. I think that was my favorite jerky I've ever had. Honestly, uh, um, we want to hit this panel over here. So let's see. Let me rotate this because. We're gonna want you to bounce into that no matter where. And we had like uh, the turkey stuffing chips. Yeah, those and tasted a they tasted a little bit like turkey, but they weren't I, like I dug them. They were all right. It was a mild taste. And yeah, it, yeah. It, sometimes chips can overdo it on the. I'm just I'm fed up of buying flavoring chips that claim to be bacon flavored or anything flavored, and you eat them and you're like, as barbecue fucker. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So like that was that was eye opening, and the and the. I really dug the fucking low-fat uh, cheese puffs. I'm not a fan of cheese puffs in general either. I ate almost the whole bag. You, not, a, you, not in one I sitting, but I think like, you did. <laughs> I, I ate possibly the entire bag in multiple I sittings. I think you did. And I was happy with that. Because, uh... I, I asked my girlfriend the other day, where's, where's the nearest Trader Joe's? When's the next time we're going to the States? Plattsburgh? And fortunately, I go there every couple of months. So okay. hopefully I'll be able to swing by and... Plattsburgh restock. shopping was a big deal when I was a kid. Be able man. to restock my life. Yeah, it was the place to go. It was it was the closest America. Like Montreal. That wasn't gotten, Toronto. Yeah, like Montreal's a lot better now for shopping, and like I don't really need to go anywhere else. But Plattsburgh that, was the place for holiday it has, shopping. It has improved over the last twenty or so years. Yeah. When I was a kid, it was kind of shit, but yeah. at the same time, I didn't really care for anything besides like Toys R Us and Microplay. Definitely. So like holiday shopping was go across the border every time, but. All right, now let me see if I can get my DOA status on. Right, yeah. And the, yeah, it seems like the the lines are actually null. You're like, uh, yeah, you're, that's what you're I thinking, yeah. So treasure chests. A. Okay. Treasure chests and then two lines. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. A. And then this is the trickier one where there's a spot between them. Yeah. It's after treasure chest, two treasure chests and a heart. Heart, yeah. Nice. Good job. Will you die? No, you won't. No, you won't. Okay. I, I, I don't like Fuck. when there's a death card and we don't see the percentages on it. I, I like seeing percentages. Yeah, I hear ya. Um, I'm not, you know, I don't need Disgaea levels of fucking getting in there, but I just want to know... Am I trying for details. nothing? Yeah, exactly. Is this a single digit percentage? Yeah. If it's an instant kill, it probably is. You know what I would take? I would. Ra I think I'd rather like a really low percentage that has a chance of working on bosses, than like a higher uh, one that doesn't. Yeah, but then you just break the game, you know? Like, I know. Because you lose to the boss, you come back, you keep casting the spell until you get it. And it's just always annoyed me that I'm like none of these. Like it's like someone that gets a ton of of abilities that are like status effects and ailments and so on, and you just can't use them on the fights where you need the most in the game. You know? Yeah, but Persona. Like you get a ton of useful things that you just fucking you don't use. You don't use, yeah. And you know, and then like you, you're, and you, why waste turns on status ailments in a random battle yeah. when you can just do damage and kill it in two turns and move on? I you mean, know? the problem with status ailmenting bosses is like, unless they're designed to be hit with ailments, like it just trivializes them, right? But ailments like become trivial anyway in in a, in a game where you can just slap and kill. For you know what I mean, and like the damage you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I, de I mean, I definitely think it's a balance thing where it's like, are ailments supposed to be a big deal in this game? And in most games, they're not. They're, you know, they're secondary forms of damage and problem. 
Like I, I just I, I, like or, or think about it in a more useful. Can you aim it at the eagle thing and see what happens? Uh, I can. Yeah. I'd love. Um, I'd love to know. Okay, so we would have to just that one over to the right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. No, that was a cancel. Yeah, th th that's all. You know, I I, I just kind of. But the death spell is too far. The death, fine. That's fine. That's too far. That's fine. Because then you but don't have a boss fight anymore, unless it's it's, oh, a, it's a battle. Fight. Cool. So it was a trap. Yeah. What kind of fight? Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, you guys were weak to what again? I forget. Fire and. No, he's normal. Okay. All right. Well. All right. Well, you know. Sure. Good to know. Because, like, yeah, de death is just... Unless it's a boss who's, like, invincible, but you have to open him up and then cast death on him during that phase where he's open or something, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and that's yeah, the yeah. only way to kill him or something? Like, a situational thing like that, yes, that would be really cool. Like, no doubt, without a doubt. Just uh, just don't make my ailments completely and utterly useless. Some of them, like, sleep and paralysis are, are really overpowered when it comes to bosses, though. You know, like, if they only get one Stun turn... Stunning them, them completely, Like, yeah. making them lose their turns really breaks their design apart. But but then but then look at the press turn system in SMT. Like, yeah, but it's balanced to be that shit. It'll wreck your shit, or you'll wreck its shit. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I mean, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a, like, a direct situation where... Yeah. I mean, SS, SMT, like, well, four anyway, it's just all about, like, ceaseless attacking, you know? And that's uh, how you succeed. Yeah, I get, I'm just frustrated because I, I feel like it, it it's almost always useless. Uh, oh, fuck, I went for the wrong... Oh, shit. <laughs> Brain wow. froze up and I went for the wrong one. Eh, that was pretty strong anyway. I just don't remember the last time we've seen that. If ever. Because I was trying to I was trying to think of um I was trying to think of trying to finish my sentence, which I still can't even do right now. Do you even remember what the sentence was about? Oh god, it was uh example Yeah, status ailments being useless is all. That, that's all. It was just it was something about that and I, I fucking blanked because yeah. multitask hard breaking down. Okay, well, whatever. Um Cinnamon, come in here, give us some life. Yeah, it, it, like it, it just—it feels like a whole subsystem of an RPG that almost never gets used. I mean, usually, like most RPGs, generally speaking, tend to have like one subsystem that's like always just ignored a little bit, you know. And and you know, it's a tradition to have status elements at this point in games, but it's one. Oh, this is actually—it stayed charged. Oh, let me just put it back the other way, just in case. <laughs> Why not? Double um, trap. Yeah, it's a tradition to have it at this point, but eh, we can do better. That's all I'm saying. I mean, it does vary it up because it always makes you keeping in. It always makes you keep in mind that damage isn't the only thing. And I'm sure there's a game out there that that has improved this that I that I'm just I'm not aware of. You yeah, know? yeah, for sure. There's a game called Eternal Poison that I've always wanted to play on PS2, <laughs> and I've got a copy of what it. What the fuck is that, that name? I know, it's a great name. <laughs> I've always wanted to play it, and I've always wondered, and I haven't looked it up. I know it's a tactical RPG, and people liken it to Fire Emblem. Okay. Um, and I, I own it already, actually. But I've never played it. I've never looked it up. But in my mind, I like to imagine that it has some crazy poison mechanics. But I don't think it does. It's called Eternal Poison. It's called poison. Eternal Poison. <laughs> and it's got this awesome... It better. Like, it's got this awesome art style. It fucking better. Yeah. Like, you can't... You're not allowed to, to use name that name. That. And, and and not have, like, the sickest, most crazy infections of poison. Or at heavy least, poison. at least something appropriate, like how End of Eternity never ends. Ugh. <sighs> It, it, there were a couple of people talking it, to us in the It never ends how, if like, you never finish it. Yeah, exactly, about how it totally ends. It's only like 35 hours long. No. Like, you're and, a liar. And, you're and, a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen at least one screenshot of someone's platinum trophy. Oh, damn. Someone did show off that, and I'm like, you are a more patient man than I was. Yeah. Because I wanted, I wanted to care. I gave you it to my you money. Didn't fuck up your hexagons in that one area, <sighs> so you got locked out. The style was there. It was, I, I, you know, I'm all about that gun style. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it just but, yeah. couldn't hold my interest. I don't know what else to say. Yeah. No, totally. The, and the, the plot just kind of left me like fucking. 
Staring at my toes. Um, staring at your toes. That's a that's an awfully specific feeling to have. I can't say I've ever had that. Well, I'm look. You got the controller in your hand, and you're looking at it, and then occasionally you're just like, I think I'll just look past that and glaze over. Yeah, of course, that makes sense. It it it, it sucks, you know. I was excited for that. Um, there's some, like, there's some games where you just like. You want you give it more than a, an earnest try, and you just you get nothing yeah, in return. Yeah, you went so far because you believed that um, there could be something. The uh, God, what the fuck? There was a game on the PS2 called um, Over Zenith. Uh, I recognize Oz. the name, but I'm not. I, I I'm and not I think it had a different name. I think it. I think that might have been the Japanese name, and then I think it had a different name in English. Um, I'm searching it up, so I'll, yeah. I'll tell you in a second. But the, and it had it has to this day one of the coolest intro sequences ever. It's got amazing music. You mean music. like like the the opening? The opening sequence, it like 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 uh, burst angel levels of like this is some cool shit. Yeah yeah yeah. Oh, get ready mean, get ready. You mean the sword of Etheria? Sword of Etheria. Yeah, Do you yeah, know yeah. the game? Yeah, I know the sword of Etheria. Yes. I don't know over Zenith. I've over never, Zenith uh... is its Japanese name Oz. And that, that's what I just, I don't know, whatever. That's what me and my friend... Oh, Bazinus. Yeah, that's what me and my uh, shmup god Pat used to call it, because that's what we Because that's what it was. was, yeah, exactly. You know? Um, just yeah, like, this game's we didn't say RPG. Resonance of Fate just there, you know? Yeah. Um, I refuse. And it was, it's an action RPG, and it's got, like, a cool juggle system, and it's got all this fun, fun stuff going for it. The, um, art's, the art's fucking nice, like the yeah. work. Yeah. And you'd have game art's not amazing. You'd kind of do this kind of. It's like you'd run, you'd have three three characters that are like kind of henchined, and you do like Jonathan Charlotte, Jonathan Charlotte style switching and comboing and yeah. fun stuff. But it just didn't deliver. It never went anywhere. And it's just such a fucking shame because the presentation was yeah. ace. You know, and you want to give it a try, and you want to give it more than its fair try, uh, more than its fair shake, and it, it disappoints. I'm trying to remember the last time. Oh no! Those are locked. Can't do it. I remember the last time that I really, like, tried with the game and I just didn't get anything out of it. I think a lot of people think that I... That was Keep my, in mind my those experience. are blocked. Sorry? Rem remember that those, we oh, didn't yeah, get yeah. those items. Uh, I think a lot of people think, after that podcast with Xavier Woods, that uh, I hated FF13. But that's not the case. I, I, I enjoyed FF13 all the way through, and that's why I got the Platinum Trophy and everything, because I enjoyed it. But, like, I'm able to look back on it, and I know it's not a great game at all. Like, it's very, very flawed. Um, and I didn't put myself through that out of, like, dislike or anything. I enjoyed it. Just it was... It's got problems. But, like, what was one that I actually fucking oh, shit, sorry. Wrong tried? Direction. Like, I attempted. <laughs> Funny you should mention that. You know what? In fact, hold on a second. Let me, let me see if I can pull something up here. Oh, yeah? Uh, this is pretty funny. He's popping open his twit. You're gonna fucking love this. It's... Uh, what your favorite Final Fantasy game says about you. <laughs> okay. It's like, you know, what your opinion is on what, like, if you, like, they ask you, like, what's the best Final Fantasy and yeah, whatever what you, do you say, say. What do you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking great. Uh-huh. Uh, Final Fantasy 1. Harry, you can read this out, actually. Okay. Enjoy. Okay, yeah. FF1, Why? FF, you know what? <laughs> this already upsets me because two is my favorite. Yeah, well, here we go. Here this we already go. upsets me. Here we go. So number two is contrarian as fuck, objectively wrong, probably intolerable. If you like FF2 best. I like it a lot. Okay. I lo like, because it's just a precursor to Saga, and Minwoo was a good character. <laughs> uh, FF3. Rustled. Why, but less than one, probably a hipster. I don't like FF3 that much. Uh, four. Person who got into the series with it, nostalgic for it, makes Spoonie Bard jokes. That's a good game. Five. Person who likes the job system, probably Japanese. That's a fucking good game. Six. Uh, misses the age of SNES RPGs, maybe a contrarian shitter. I played FF before it was cool, for example. Uh, that's a good game. FF7. Mainstream pick, probably the closest to a correct pick. Mm -hmm. Not afraid to look like tepid oatmeal. <laughs> um, tepid oatmeal. <laughs> It's a good pick. It's a great game. Uh, it's not a bad uh, game at all. Crazy person, incredibly attracted to the potential, the botched narrative. Cyber had, liquid, we needed Loves that. junctioning. All right. Yep. Nine, safest pick of all, probably loves MCU movies, The Force Awakens, and jumping into Light Fierce. 
<laughs> okay, that last one really caught me off guard. That last one really caught me off guard. I read it, and it wasn't until it was out of my mouth that I was like, oh, that's good. Uh, that's a good game. Final Fantasy X, bad taste, easily dazzled by, dazzled by production values. Probably thinks Riku or Yuna is best girl. Oh, thank you. Um... 12, skips 11. 12, someone who actually played this game respectable in all manners. And 13, either Matomu Toriyama or an armpit fetishist. Um, <laughs> which is, yeah. So that's some shit. 